one of the issues, obviously, with the union is the contradiction between what we advocated for the workers and what the staff, the, the people that work for the union, mm -hmm. had. So uh, it was hard when you uh, when you were working and and you advocated for people to have a decent wage and a, and a, to be able to take care of their families and all of that. But the people that work for the union. Was still having to subsist on ten dollars a week, having no money. Uh, they had to go out and, and 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 ask for food stamps if they wanted to have enough to eat or live uh, communally and share and and, and pool their ten dollars so that there'd be food for everybody. And that just didn't didn't make any sense for the organization, nor did it make sense for the health of the organization, because in order for it to survive, it needed to have the workers themselves take over leadership of the union uh, and they couldn't afford to go work for ten dollars a week when they were making good union wages so so that contradiction i think became uh, uh, wasn't sustainable and in fact when caesar died uh, and his family basically took over leadership of the union they did change the structure so that people started getting salaries uh, uh, they got a salary structure and, and, and other things like that, which I think is necessary because people need to be able to take care of their families. Uh, it's okay for one individual to choose to take about poverty, but taking about poverty for your kids and your family is a problem, you know, uh, being able to, to have that. So, so that was a, a, a big issue. Uh, along with the structure of, of the union and how it functioned and its focus. You know, the union started spending a lot more time on internal struggles within itself rather than organizing workers. And the uh, success of the union stalled. And uh, many of the, uh, the leaders of the union that had developed through the struggle, through organizing campaigns, through the boycotts and all of that, wound up leaving the union and going to other careers and uh, as a result you know the union never fulfilled its promises that it had uh, uh, for uh, for its members you know we at, at its peak we won elections to represent about I think it was like around 80,000 people uh, but we never turned those into contracts we never turned them into structure and the promise of the UFW of being a force for positive social change uh, didn't it did never reach its potential. In the time that it was uh, that it did all of the, the organizing and all of it made tremendous inroads. It would have done much more had we ever turned into a permanent effective organization. And that never happened. So um, but having said that. I think that you would say that the legacy of Cesar Chavez lives on in the organizers he trained, the strategies that he employed, and the uh, belief that it uh, created in people in their own power of making change. And I think that you see that uh, the growing power of the Latino vote in California that changed its politics forever all has its roots in the UFW organizing strategies that Caesar pioneered in those days at CSO and first and then with the UFW. And uh, that is, 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 the, is the legacy. The union itself didn't uh, fulfill its promise, but the strategies and, and the ideas and the vision that he had uh, certainly did uh, live up to its potential and continues to contribute to making positive change in this in this state, and I think, the, given the size of California, it spreads out throughout the country. So, all of that, with all I know today, if I had to do it again, I'd do it in a New York minute. It was the most wonderful, the most exciting, the most the most empowering uh, part of our life, and I think thousands of people that were in that movement uh, would agree with me. The end. Ha, 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 ha.